Oh. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> How you doing out there, folks? I'm sorry. It's been a long time. <sighs> okay, so uh, I'm here. I'm I'm back for the tenth time. How about that? So anyway, um, look at uh. Yeah, I, I won't go through the whole thing again. 2006, I started this. Now it's 2023. So, yeah, it's been a while. I probably look a lot older, you know, every time I get on here. But anyway, um, I'm here. And I just thought, you know, it's been since like eight months since I made a video. I think I should get something out there. And I've been meaning to. I did something on a couple things on my Vinyl TV channel. I've been sort of paying a little bit of attention to that. And of course, I'm live every Friday night on Vaughn.live slash CraigTube. So if you, you know, if you're kind of wondering where I am, you can catch me then. It's every Friday night. So here we are. And I got myself a nice beer. It's uh, in the after. Uh, well, I was going to say it's Tuesday afternoon, but it might not be Tuesday when I post this video. But anyway. Oh, man. I love beer. Got a guy uh, who broadcasts on Vaughn Live, same place I do, and he plays old commercials, and uh, he sometimes old beer commercials, and you, you those old beer commercials, there's nothing like those old beer commercials. Um, just beer looks so good. <laughs> well, you know, they've got it poured into this big glass and everything, all the foam. Those are the beer commercials. Those are the ones. Not today's beer commercials. Today's beer, beer commercials suck. Anyway, um, uh, okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit. I got, uh, I got some stuff here, so I'll just um, show you it in a minute. I just uh, want to just say hello and um, just been busy and haven't really had a lot of time to make videos and there isn't really a lot else I can tell you about home brewing other than just like what, what I'm doing, which is the same thing I've been doing for a few years now and actually more than a few years. And that's uh, brewing uh, Cooper's beer kits. So, well, which I probably won't be doing for much longer because um, my supplier is not going to be carrying Cooper's anymore. They're going to be carrying Muntins. So I won't go into the reasons and everything. It doesn't matter. But uh, so... I've got a batch of Cooper's kits here, um, and I'll tell you why I have all of these. Why don't we just grab the, this is why I set it up this way, so we could just grab this camera and uh, show you uh, what we've got over here. So, uh, excuse me. Yeah, there's a little bit of a collection of uh, Cooper's beer kits here. And the reason Excuse me, I'm burping because I just drank some beer. The reason why I have these is because they are all past their best before date. And you can't really sell them on the shelf when they're past their date. So there's 25 cans here. So you've got some, uh, some real ale there. Some stouts. I think that's... There's a couple of Irish stouts. And then there's just a regular one there. Some draft four or five of those, a bunch of, uh, what are these? Is that, is that draft? No, that's lager. Sorry. This is draft. And, uh, then over there, we've got some sparkling ale and I think there's Pilsner over there and another one, something behind there. So all told there's 25 cans and they're all past their best before date. Now, uh, by the way, don't mind my workbench. It is a workbench. I, I don't eat off of this, so don't worry. Um, yeah, it's, it's old. It's been through a lot. I've fixed all kinds of stuff on here, including greasy stuff and everything. Um, that's just my workbench. There's some dextrose there. Those are my tools. Uh, yeah, there's my brewing pot and stuff like that. But anyway, back to the beer kits. Yeah, they can't sell them if they're past their date. I mean, they can sell them, but they have to sort of sell them privately. You know, like, you know, if you want to buy a beer kit that's past its date, then that's up to you, but they can't put it on the shelf, the display shelf and sell it like, you know, like normal. So anyway, that's how I ended up with these. There's absolutely no problem with the fact that these are past their 
due dates. And I know that because I've brewed one of these kits before, actually a few of them before, that were a year past their best before date. And they were fine. There was no problem with it. I didn't notice any difference at all in the flavor. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe there's a slight difference in the hop profile. I don't know, but it, I didn't notice anything. Uh, but the problem with these, what happens is that the yeast that's usually on top in, in these cans, usually stuck to the top of the can, the yeast goes bad. And I know that because I had a couple of them that were past their date come with bad yeast and the yeast would not work. And so what happened was, see, this is a, here's a yeast package here. Um, you, you know, when you shake it, so you can put it up to the microphone, you can hear it. You can hear it shaking. I had a few of these, uh, some of these Cooper's cans that when you shook the yeast, it didn't make a sound at all. I can't get it to do it. This one's got lots of air in it, so you can hear it. Um, they didn't have any air in them. They were completely like vacuum sealed. Like, you know, there was no way you could shake them. And so I didn't think much of it. I just thought, yeah, yeah, it's just got no air in it. So I put it in and set it up and nothing happened. So I had to add another, um, yeast package to get it to go. That happened twice. So I surmised that if you get a yeast package like this with the, it's Cooper's yeast pack, I don't know if this happens with other ones, that you can't hear the yeast shaking around inside, uh, then uh, the yeast has gone bad. It's died. And I don't know why it, it eats up all the air inside. I guess it maybe it it tries to consume the oxygen inside the package and it, it sucks in all the air. I don't quite know why it happens or maybe it's just some sort of moisture thing. Maybe if you if you know, you can post a comment in the comments and tell me why you think the yeast goes, uh, loses all of its air and then it dies. So uh, that's why I've got all these cans because they were sold to me at an extreme discount uh, without yeast, most of them without yeast. And we just threw the yeast in the garbage. So that's how I got all these. So I'm, I'm good for a while. That's a good deal. The cans are great. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the yeast. I mean, with the malt extract inside the cans, they, they're going to brew up just fine. Um, it's just that, you know, I don't have the yeast. So you might say, let me put this back here. You might say, boom, boom, boom. Um, what am I going to do without yeast? Well, of course I can buy yeast and, you know, you just buy it. Right. Um, but I don't have to do that because five of those kits came with good yeast. Now I've got those in the fridge. Um, that's enough, that's enough yeast for all those cans. And you might say, well, how the hell are you going to get to brew 25 cans of, over the next, how many ever months that's going to take with five sachets of yeast? Well, I've told you this before, you can reuse yeast. As you, you you know this stuff. I've already covered this. Many people have covered it. Uh, you you can you can you know reuse the yeast. So you just brew up a beer when it's finished. You transfer it out into wherever you're going to put it, and then the stuff that's in the bottom of the fermenter, the cake, the yeast cake at the bottom, you just pour it into a uh, you know a sanitized jar. Put the lid on. Stick that in the fridge or brew it up. Brew it. When you make your next batch, just pour it in. Now, I know this is primitive stuff. A lot of you guys are, you've got these huge, and I've said this so many times, I can't even believe I'm saying it again. These huge brew setups and great, I'm happy for you. I want to come visit you and taste some of your beer, but uh, I don't have time to do that. And uh, it's getting too old for me to start lifting all those heavy pots and have all those things. And I just don't really brew for the hobby aspect of it. Anyway, I brew to save money. So, um, you know, these Cooper's kits are, or the, any beer kits really are fine for me, uh, because they taste good and I don't, there's not a lot of work involved in them and they get me by. That's me. Maybe not, maybe that's not you, but that's me. So anyway, um, and that's what this beer is, a. it's a real ale, not much of foam on it, but I, that's my fault. I undercarbonated it. Ah. <sighs> Nothing wrong with that. You, you brew your beer and you, you dump in the yeast from the last batch. That's all. 
And now I've used uh, the same yeast. I got all kinds of noises going on down here. I've used the same yeast for uh, a whole year, actually, once. And I did a video, a bunch of videos over the course of a year where I was using the same yeast over and over and over again. It was an expensive yeast. It was a liquid yeast. And uh, I thought, why am I throwing this out? You know, I brewed a batch of beer with it, and there it is in the bottom of the fermenter. It looked just like it did when I put it in. So why am I throwing it out? So yeah, of course I reused it and reused it, and it went for a long time. And what happened was, after about a year or more, and we were all surprised. I mean, I was surprised. Some of you who watched that were pretty surprised, because they say you can't use it any more than five times. Maybe that's true if you're concerned about like it, you know being really accurate with the strain of yeast like you know if it mutates or something over t over a period of time then you maybe maybe you no longer have the original strain of yeast so if you're looking for a specific um beer that needs a specific strain of yeast then maybe you can't do this as, for as long as i did maybe five is enough that you know after that you're gonna the yeast is going to develop its own personality and it's not going to be like it was in the first run. Maybe, maybe that's probably true. But as far as active yeast goes, when I don't even know what, well, I mean, I knew what that yeast was, but I don't know what the hell this is. It's just Cooper's yeast, whatever. It could be anything. Um, it's not, it's not what it used to be. This is not original Cooper's yeast from back in the day. This is different. And I, I know this. I mean, unless somebody else knows differently, because it's not the same. It's not even the same, like, grind. Grind. It's much finer than the other yeast they used to give you. And I'm happy about that, because I didn't like their old yeast at all. I used to throw it in the garbage and use, use you know, Safale or US whatever, 05 or whatever. So, um, when I got this expensive yeast, I started using it. You know, I didn't care after a while what it was you know the characteristics of it specifically as whatever it was when i when i got it it was for a specific beer but as time went on i didn't really care because i was just brewing up these cans right so i did that for about a year and then after a while it started acting up um and it started like foaming over and being really wild and everything and had some weird flavors so i assume it kind of it either got infected or it just mutated and couldn't be used anymore for beer. So um, now with the Cooper's yeast, I've been using it uh, over and over again. And that's what I plan on doing with these cans because I have five cans that came with good yeast, right? So I'll just brew the first one, you know, keep the yeast, go for five batches or six, however many I can go, 10, I don't know. I, mean, I might be able to get through the whole thing with one package of yeast, but... I'm not sure about that because I've got a, a brew going right now that's only, the yeast has only been used maybe three times. Maybe three. And um, let me show you it. Get your gravel, folks. We're moving around. Uh, that's what happens. And I got to fix the airlock. I think it's got beer in it this is what happens when the yeast uh, is used too many times now this is only three times with the cooper's yeast it, it's a hell of a mess it just goes look at the top of it it just goes berserk and uh, this is what happens so um the batch before this uh it had a really thick krausen ring like here, it was like that thick. And that's not, I don't usually get that. So I knew something was up, but I used the yeast again for this batch. This is a, this is a stout. So I'm going to assume that this yeast has exploded. It's had it. It's not happy anymore. And that's why I've got this, this mess. It might not be that. Uh, it might be that it's just maybe this batch because it's a stout and it's really, you know, I don't know. But that's what happens. So I'm going to throw this yeast out when I'm done brewing this. And I'm going to uh, start a new uh, yeast. So, uh, and, and with the next batch, what I do. Plus, it's probably not going to be a stout that time either. Let me just, uh, looks like my battery's going dead here. So 
better finish up here. Let's get this back on here. There we go. So that's that's what I'm doing. That's what's happening there. And I'll have to fix that airlock there. So there you have that. Um, that's what I'm doing. And I'm just brewing the kits. Um, I know a lot of people who do that. And I know a few people who are more into it and they do, you know, more uh, elaborate methods and whatnot, which is perfectly fine with me. Um, and it's fine with them too. So, hey, everybody's happy. It's your beer. You do it your way and I'll do mine my way. Uh, so that is that. And this is this. Oh, it's good. It's pretty good. That's not, I'm not head over heels with it. It's fine. It's as good as anything, really. I mean, unless you're brewing. I mean, I know guys who brew a fantastic beer. Got a guy in Norway, a couple of guys in Norway who brew. And they sent me, they've sent me quite a few beers, actually, from, from there. And uh, they've got some fantastic recipes, you know, just really good stuff. So, you know, I'm not doing that here. I'm, I'm obviously not getting those kinds of results with what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is just to keep the pipeline. That's all. I would I would normally just buy beer, you know, like every like most other people do, except that it's very expensive uh, in, in where I live. So, you know, I just don't want to pay the money. And I've been brewing beer since I was 20 years old. And I'm now 40, going on 48. So... That's a lot of years <laughs> that I've been brewing beer and have barely been into a beer store during all that whole time. Into a store where it sells beer. And in Canada, we have beer stores that only sell beer. So, yep, that's, uh, that's that. What else is going on? Nothing really. Uh, it's quiet here. Uh, it's, you know, it's turning to fall. It's, the weather's getting cooler, which is nice. I like that. And I, I guess I'm due to go out on one of those walks outside with this uh camera and uh just shoot the shoot the you know what uh for you guys just tell you what's going on but that's basically it here there's really nothing going on there's nothing to film i mean how many times do you want to see me make a you know a cooper's kit or a munton's kit i am gonna i have i have a lot of kits but i am gonna buy a couple of the munton's kits when they come out when he gets them because i want to try them I want to see how they are. And he'll want me to like try them anyways and tell him how, what I think. So, cause I'm the one he asked me, he said, you know, what brand do you think I should carry? And I said, well, if you can't get Cooper's, get Muntins. And so he's getting Muntins. And uh, so I'm, I feel obligated to like try a couple of them just to make sure to tell him, you know, yeah, these are, you know, these are okay. Cause I'm, I'm sure they are brewed, brewed Muntins before. And uh, they've have good. They've got good products, but you know, Cooper's doesn't want to uh, really, you know, doesn't want to accommodate his needs. So uh, he's backing out of them and going with the uh, Muntins. So too bad, so sad. And you know, I love the Cooper's kits. I do. I mean, they uh, look at all the different flavors you get and everything, and they 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 make good stuff. I have to say, Cooper's make good products. Or they used to like, you know, but these are all good. Um. They were bought out by Mr. Beer, and it doesn't feel like the same atmosphere, you know, when you deal with them as it used to be when they were just Australian. But uh, anyway, they they make great products, but I just can't, won't be able to get them anymore really very easily. So we're going to do Muntins next. So that's it. Folks, I don't have anything else to say. I'm sorry. I, I think I should let you get back to your lives. Um Check out my Vinyl TV channel. It's called Vinyl TV. Uh, it's not beer related. And um, talk about mostly vinyl, turntables, uh, stereo equipment, you know, sound, audio, stuff like that. If you're interested, then you just head over there and subscribe. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm posting, I've been posting more often over there than I have here because there I have things to talk about. Here I don't really. I mean, I don't know what you want me to talk about. So uh, that's it, folks. And don't forget, Friday nights, again, 10 p.m. Eastern, it's vaughn.live slash craigtube. And it's just music 
and chat room. Great chat room. Love the chat room. Beautiful people in there. You do not have to be afraid to go in there and say hello. Or just don't go in there. Just just watch, you know, and I'm mean, playing music and classic classic hits from 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. Um, great audio, probably one of the best audio on, on the platform. I'm very proud of my sound quality. Um, and it's just fun. And I'm on until 3 a.m. Eastern. And yes, I drink wine and beer while I'm on there. So it's kind of sort of beer related, but not really. So if you want, check it out. That's where I am every week. If you, if you miss this, then you can go there and check that out. Because that's my real most, um, the thing I enjoy doing the most is live. Um, there's no editing involved and just, I'm on camera and I'm, there's the people watching and that's it, you know, it's finished and that's it. It's the end of it. Um, and we have a lot of fun on there, there. Now I've filled up my time here. I'm going to get going. Thanks for watching everybody. I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just, I don't make as many videos as I used to. So, but, um, you know, I'm still here. And if you want to, if you need to find me just Friday nights on Vaughn live, that's, that's where I'm going to be for the foreseeable, foreseeable future. Cheers, everybody, and thanks for coming back and watching. We'll see you soon. And, uh, well, I can't remember the, did I have a tagline? Keep brewing those beers or something like that. Anyway, cheers. <laughs>